All right, cool. Um, welcome everybody. My name's Crazy A Andrews uh, from the Discord. Uh, today we're going to be going over uh, the art of using the fibo. That's what you want to call it. Um, that's what I call it. I like to think of it as an art. Um, so anybody's extremely new to using the fibo, they've never even heard of it. Uh, I'm going to pull up like a blank spot on the chart and just go over a couple of things on, on how I use it. All right, so whatever platform you're on, you know, I'm gonna just go to drawings. Um, and you're gonna pull up the Fibonacci retracement tool, which is here, all right? Then you're gonna have two points on a, a, a chart that you're gonna be using. I call it a swing low to swing high. So we're gonna get into to the very basics here. Uh, you start it at the bottom, pull it at the top, all right, so that's going to be for a move that started at the bottom and it, and the run's coming to an end. So now you're starting to see a pullback. This is where you're going to use it because you're going to have a retracement, right? So the Fibonacci tool and what it is, is it's a retracement tool. Uh, it can be used for retracements to the upside and be used for retracements to the downside. So what you have here, once you draw it out, is you have retracement levels. Each of these levels represents a percent. That percentage represents a percent of the, the move that we have retraced. So if you get a move from one to 10 and it pulls back to five, it's gonna be a 50% retracement of that move, correct? So that's kind of what we're dealing with here. Um, and when using the Fibonacci retracement, normally, not always, uh, but you have your 50% and you have your 61.8%. So that 61.8 and the Fibonacci sequence, uh, sequence is known as the golden ratio, all right? When you have a lot of shorts, say, that are, that are shorting a stop, they're going to be covering, remember, not always, but normally they like to cover around that 50% to 61.8. Uh, and then when you have these retracement moves, that's after a big run up, um, a lot of times we're going to bounce from the 50 or 61.8. So a good, when you see a strong uptrend and then we have a pullback, you can use that 50% as a buying opportunity using the 61.8 as your stop loss. We get candle closes below. All right. And then same thing. So we're going to delete this and flip it around. Same thing if you uh, just had a big drawdown. Like, so say a stock is coming down and you wanna know the levels that it could retrace to once it starts to curl back up. So you, that's gonna be top to bottom. And I call this, and I don't know if anybody else uses it like that, but I call it the inverse FIBO. That's what I like to use it as because it's, it's the inverse um, of the regular way of using it. So I like to keep things simple. So. I call it the inverse fib. So once you do that and you have that move, right? That's, so you see you have your line that represents a move that just came down. So same thing here. If you have something that's starting to curl back up, you know that that 50% is probably gonna be a good area where it's gonna stop and start curling back down again. All right, so if you have a, a, a strong downtrend, and then you have it starting to curl up, you can take puts or a short position at that 50%, right? Well, with your stop loss above 61.8, right? So that's a very basic way of using it. You got your Fibonacci retracement, and then you have your inverse retracement. All right, so now we're gonna get into some of the charts and how they apply. Um, very first one I wanted to show you guys was Meta. It happened on Friday. All right, so first of all, hindsight's 2020. You can always go back on the chart here and say, yeah, you know, it went to the 50% and then made a new high day. Okay, yeah, anybody can say that. So we're gonna, we're gonna act like none of this is on the chart yet. So I wanna break it down like the day's just opening. All right, so actually I'm gonna take it down to a two minute chart too. All right, so let's just say the day just opened, right? All right. So you have an opening flush and then the stock, it starts trending up, all right? So every morning, whether you're looking at SPY, whether you're looking at Meta, Apple, Tesla, it doesn't matter. 
the stock market has a pivot. 90% of the mornings, you're gonna have a morning pivot, all right? That morning pivot is when you either put in a high or a low, all right? And then you pivot. And this is what happens here. So as soon as you see that morning pivot and we start to pull back, that's when you draw your FIBO. You come here, you know, swing low to swing high. Right where I started to pull back. All right. Another thing, too, is I believe in when doing something, do it right. You know, you don't want to uh, you don't want to half ass it, basically. Uh, so make sure your lines are correct. Make sure your points are correct. Um, when you're doing it on your phone, I like to draw the fib on my phone because it has the magnet. But you see here, you can go here and um, you can go to settings and make sure you got the uh, points correct. I always want to make sure you got them correct. So we're going to measure out this high. The high is 138, 37. Make sure nothing else is higher. Yeah. So 138, 37. And yes, it matters. I know it's only one, one penny off, but trust me, it matters. You want to have the exact level. All right, so we're gonna come down here and make sure this low is correct. 134.64. All right, we're good. All right. So now you have your uh, your Fibonacci retracement. All right, so now you're watching it. So we're gonna assume that as soon as we started getting the pullback, you're gonna call that the morning pivot. All right, so now you're watching. You got your 38%. You're 50%, all right? So as soon as it comes down to this 50%, you notice that we start getting the candle back up. So as soon as you see that, you could take calls, you know, and, do, and you know, everybody's risk tolerance is different, but you could take calls at this 50%. Once you see that a candle closed, we went down to it, tapped it, then we had a candle closed that closed above it, right? So you could take calls immediately once this candle closes, with your stop below this 50%. Using it this way, you're never gonna have a big loss because you're buying where you're wrong at. I go over this a lot. If you're buying where the risk off is, you know exactly where your risk is, you know exactly where you're wrong, you know exactly where to put your stop. It takes all the guessing, all the emotions out of it, all right? And then for your targets, another reason why I like using the Fibonacci tool, you have your targets on the screen as soon as you enter the position. All right, I like to use this 23% as my target one, right? So it, it, that's gonna give you about a good two to one. So if you're entering on this candle close, right? And your first target's here and your stop is below that 50%, that's gonna be about a good two to one on a day trade, uh, risk to reward ratio. All right, so that's gonna be take profits, number one, scaling out. And then you can raise your stop and continue to hold. And your next target's gonna be high day. We hit high day, you go ahead and take the rest of your position off, hold a couple of runners, then you can hold a risk-free position the rest of the day for a potential breakout. See what happens at the end of the day, we get a big breakout, you go ahead and close out the rest of your runners there. All right, that's uh, uh, a basic concept behind using the FIBO here. So that's the Fibonacci retracement on a move that's gone higher. It put in a, a morning pivot. It pulled back to the 50%, and then it goes on to hit all the targets and make a new high day, all off of that 50%, right? All right, so that's that's one way. Now we're going to go to SPY. I want to show you guys something that, um, something that's pulling back here. We're going to go to the uh, two-hour chart. This happened this week, uh, so it's still fresh in everybody's minds. Give me one second, I'm going to look at my notes here. All right. So this move here, you see we had a move 
this uh, long consolidation period where we based for a while before we broke out to that 397.50. Uh, then we went on to tap 400. Then we had a, uh, a harder rejection at 400 that pulled back. So as soon as you see that we, we have a rejection and we're starting to pull back, that's when you're going to pull up your Fibonacci tool to get an idea of where we may bounce or what levels uh, that are important. If we get below those levels, you know we're going lower. If we hold those levels, you know it's a possibility we could bounce. Remember, those levels are going to be uh, – the 50% and the 61.8. Also, depending on the strength of the rally, uh, you can have a, a more shallow retracement to the 38%, but that's for like smaller time frames. On these larger time frames, I like to use that 50% and 61.8. All right. So I'm going to come here to the Fibonacci tool, swing low to swing high. Remember again, I'm not gonna do it just for the sake of the time of the video, but remember, make sure your points are accurate. Uh, for here, um, I know they're close enough. So you see that we came down the 50%, we held it. Uh, this was actually called out uh, by me um, in the group. Uh, I called this out, the three, it's actually 387.50 was the 50%. We came down into it, we held it. Uh, and then we talked about the move higher. Uh, 390.50 was the level. Anything above 390.50, uh, that was the move. And you see where I got that level from, 390.50. Matter of fact, for this example, I, I am going to use the, I'm going to go make sure the points are exactly correct because I want you to see this. 423. And then, what is that? 374.77. All right. So I put out my uh, spy plan yesterday. Anything above 390.50 on, on, on a confirmed break of 390.50, take calls. All right. And the first target was 391.50. Uh, second target was 392. Where I got that level from was right here. This is a 38%. All right. So we bounced off the 50%. I knew if we got candle closes above, especially hourly, above this 390.50, there was a strong possibility that we was going to go all the way back up to 394. Uh, and my original uh, thesis analysis and what I was looking at was a possible head, uh, head and shoulder forming. So over here, the high was uh, 393.70. So I was looking for that 393.70 to 394 area to possibly form a head and shoulder. You guys can see it. Unfortunately, that ain't happened. We went even higher. So now we got a, a bigger problems on our hands in terms of uh, the analysis for next week. Because technically this is, once we broke out, we made a higher low and a higher high. This is a higher low again. So this is setting up for another higher high. And if it happens, I got it right now at, uh, between 404 and 405. If we were to break this, that's going to be your target up about 404 to 405. And again, that's because uh, we broke out of this pattern, made a high, made a higher low, made a higher high. Now this off that 50% was a higher low. So you have a confirmed higher low, higher high pattern, which is bullish. All right. Um, so going into next week, how you would use this, uh, as long as all dips are holding this 394.20, we remain bullish for a retest of 400. Uh, but you also have resistance at 397.50. I'm about to show you how you get that resistance at So we're going to come to this four hour chart. Actually, it's on a weekly. I want to show you guys on a weekly how everything ties in. So from the weekly, 
if you take it from the all time high, right? Pull it down to this recent low. Remember, you got to go back and edit it because these uh these aren't correct. The original all time high was four seventy nine. 98 that's what most platforms agree on i don't know why we bulls is inaccurate here but that is the case um in the low 346.52 uh you're gonna see the magic there's the magic 397.50 uh that's why that's so important 397.50 is the 38% retracement of the entire bear market downtrend since it started in January, 2022, all the way till now, from that all time high to the bear market low, the 38% is 397.50. So that's a very important number, all right? Uh, the week before, you see that we had closed above it, which is why I was very uncertain on why everybody was so bearish, I understood it, but you've seen a lot of bearish sentiment, but the thing is, is we closed above that. So you see what's next, 413, that's the 50%. Uh, this week, we closed back below 397.50, which is a good thing, uh, especially if you have puts further out based off uh, the weekly trend line rejection, all right? So that's where your 397.50 comes from. That's why I'm using it. That's why it's so important. 